Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Uh, special thanks to the organizers for not putting me directly after Jacek's presentation. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm the head of project design at Alarm Automatica in Croatia, and uh, I'll be talking to you about trends in security and safety project solutions. Uh, you've all heard of Alarm Automatica, I, don't, I think I don't need to say too much about it. Uh, so, uh, we'll start with CCTV, and, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, we'll start with CCTV and uh, especially with cybersecurity. Why cybersecurity and CCTV? Well, CCTV is a all modern CCTV basically is TCP IP connected. So if your CCTV system is in any way connected to any network, it's potentially vulnerable to cyber attacks. So in this infographic, you can see that in 20, this, these are the data from 2022, and you can see that there, there have been uh, 6.3 trillion intrusion attempts, uh, a huge increase in IoT malware, crypto jacking, and so forth. So uh, the biggest uh, risk for us here is the intrusion attempts, and uh, we can the statistics show that the average data breach in 2022 was worth about $4.35 million, or in the healthcare industry, it was, it was worth about $10 million. So if you get breached, it's going to cost you. And this is a nice quote at, uh, at the end of this slide. Cybersecurity is much more than a matter of IT. Uh, what does this mean? It means that uh, cybersecurity by itself is not enough to make your system secure. So here are some best practices to avoid cyber attacks, um, like using different unique passwords for all devices, uh, using firewalls, not being connected to the internet, or just forwarding the ports that uh, are required, encrypting the video material, encrypting the connections, and so forth. Uh, some manufacturers actually force the installer to change the password on every camera, by using uh, one-time unique passwords which are embedded in the camera during the commissioning phase. And of course, that other manufacturers build in uh, cybersecurity in their cameras, such as Vivotex Trend Micro App, uh, which basically detects any kind of uh, brute force attempt or any other network attacks and uh, sends out the information to the entire CCTV system uh, isolating the IP address from which the attack has come. Uh, moving on to other trends, uh, we have the cloud-managed solutions. Now, we all know that a standard CCTV system is comprised of uh, NVR switches or network equipment and the end devices or cameras. Uh, now, this is a trend uh, in bigger in bigger sites, in larger applications, uh, and especially in IT-based companies who have uh, already established a very good uh, IT infrastructure, which can be used to transfer the data from the, actual act from the cameras to the servers, which are running uh, virtual NVRs or software used to manage CCTV. Uh, so, is this a risk? Well, if you have a, a big site which has redundancies, which has enough network capacity, which has power redundancies, it's not a risk because generally these kind of companies actually run their business on their network. So, if you lose the network for your CCTV, it's not that important because they've also lost their network and lost their business. Uh, what are some advantages of this? This, uh, it's centrally monitored system components. They can be monitored remotely. Uh, we can have multiple sites monitored from the same place. And uh, a few words about software as a service. Uh, it provides models that are subscription based. So uh, if the user just wants a basic CCTV 
CCTV system with just recording and no special features, he can, they can get it at a lower price point than, let's say, a system which needs special uh, analytics, AI, and so forth, which can be sold at a bigger price point. Uh, edge analytics is another trend uh, in CCTV, basically meaning that the any kind of analysis is done inside the camera. It's processed by the camera and uh, then sent out to the central software, to the NVR, which uh, reduces network traffic and reduces uh, strain on the actual NVR or software processing. So uh, using AI, for example, uh, in the picture with the crosswalk, we can see the result of uh, AI's analysis of the video showing uh, persons uh, showing persons or uh, adding metadata uh, for example male person with red shirt or with white cap and so on and another nice feature is the best shot and path analysis which allows uh, the user of the cctv to get uh, the best as the name itself says, to get the best shot, the best face from the entire time the person was inside the recorded frame. And also the path analysis can also show where the person exactly moved through the, through the space. Uh, CCTV is also used in non-security applications, mostly for business improvement. So uh, this is not a new trend. Uh, heat maps and uh, marketing or business analysis, but it uh, has been on the rise nevertheless uh, in projects in Croatia. So some retail chains uh, like to have, as you see in the image, uh, they like to have uh, fisheye cameras above, which show heat maps uh, where you can see, for example, the red zones are places where buyers were uh, pausing or standing more often, more looking at some products, while the green or yellow zones are uh, zones where persons were walking more faster or not, not looking as much at the merchandise. Uh, another trend that has been growing in the last few years is parking using LPR cameras uh, and uh, users or parking space owners have moved away from traditional paper parking tickets and are moving towards even avoiding paper at all. So they, the system basically scans the license plate of the car, has a time of entry, and when the car owner gets back to the parking to, to, to do the payment, he can just input his license plate in the system, pay it with a card or cash, and move on exit freely when the ramp is, is activated or opened by the system. Control of the technological process is another trend recently basically used to uh, using cameras to monitor the efficiency of a production process or let's say or using cameras to monitor uh, temperature in some moving parts of the process. And uh, yeah, for traffic cameras, uh, they aren't used just for ticketing, for punishing people. They can be used for monitoring traffic efficiency, traffic flow, uh, checking out if there are uh, gridlocks, if traffic lights needs to be changed manually, and so forth. Uh, facial recognition, another big trend. And I'd like to say that it's uh, not being used just for CCTV, but it can be used also as a sort of an alarm. Recently, we've had a project in a office building with three or four floors, which has access control on all floors. So you, if you come up through the stairwell, you can't get in if you don't have a card, but you can get in through the elevator. Now, the elevator also has a card reader, but uh, theoretically, if there are 10, 12 persons uh, inside the elevator, and if there are 
100 people working on a certain floor, it means that someone can enter the elevator and get out at the floor without being checked for any access card or any other credentials. So what this system does, it has a database of all the faces of all the employees of this company, so about 400 or 500 people. And also, when a guest arrives to the, to the office building, his face is also recorded, scanned, and sent out to the system. Now, uh, if in some case, or if, if it happens so that an intruder comes up through the elevator, there are cameras at every elevator bank, and they will instantly uh, re see and record and alert the security staff that an unknown person or an unknown face has appeared, let's say, on the second floor of the building. So this is a very nice tool and very efficient tool uh, to keep your premises secure. Uh, okay, moving on to access control. Mobile credentials are also on the rise, uh, meaning that uh, you use your mobile phone instead of an RFID card. Why is this good? Well, no one, no one leaves their home without their cell phone. You won't lose your cell phone, or if you misplace it, you will look for it right away. If you lose your key card, maybe you won't remember, maybe you won't need it that day anymore, and you won't remember you don't have it on you. So uh, it can get stolen, and it can get used to enter the premises. Uh, the mobile phone also pro instantly provides two-factor authentication, meaning that uh, you can't use it as a credential. You can't check in at the card reader without unlocking your phone with your uh, thumbprint or uh, access, access code. So this makes it uh, much more secure than using ordinary, ordinary RFID cards. Uh, also another uh, trend in making everything more secure while using RFID cards is encrypted communication. So not just between, uh, let's say, the server and the card reader, but also between the actual card and the reader. Um, normally, in, let's say, legacy systems or normal systems, when you place the card at the reader, it instantly gives away its code. And it... Uh, basically allows itself to be copied or abused. Uh, in this case, with encrypted uh, communication or encrypted uh, card, uh, the card will not communicate with the reader until it gets a valid, let's say, hello from the reader, and until it gets a valid code uh, from the reader identifying itself as being leg legitimate. Uh, another thing in access control, intercom, so this is more used maybe in uh, residential buildings, but also in uh, business places. Um, Bass IP has uh, a range of uh, intercoms which not only use uh, normal call buttons, cards, or uh, pins. They also use uh, QR codes and have the possibility of scanning the face. Uh, the QR codes or any other kind of uh, credential can be one time, so you can send it to a delivery guy or a friend or someone who will just enter the building once. You can set the duration if you have family visiting. You can print them out the QR code and give it to them and make it valid for two days until they're gone. And uh, regarding the face recognition, it has the anti spoofing feature, so you can just show someone's picture uh, because the system will know it's a picture, it's not a person, I won't let you in. Uh, moving on to intrusion systems, we all, we all heard of Ajax, of wireless intrusion. So this has been on the rise for years now, and I'd just like to mention the reasons why. So we all know that, that there's a lack of technicians and that the price of installation is high. So this, this not just Ajax, any kind of uh, wireless system, can be quickly installed without cables. It can be quickly configured, and it's safe and easy to use. Uh, these are some data from research that shows what uh, home users want from their systems. 
So of course they want to be notified about the possible intrusion, but they also want to see CCTV cameras. They want to monitor events around the house and the more and more intrusion systems are becoming integrated with the, the smart home functions. So you can, as this infographic shows, you can not only control your intrusion, you can control doors, you can install uh, smoke sensors, connect to the cameras, connect lighting, uh, gates, heating, and basically any other thing that can be controlled via KNX or Modbus or any other compatible protocol. Three minutes. Okay, moving on to safety. Uh, fire alarms, they're now online. Inim, the one manufacturer of fire, system, fire detection systems, has a cloud application which can uh, notify the users of any possible fires or, or faults in their system. Of course, this is not a re replacement for the fire brigade notification, which needs to be EN54 compatible, but it's a nice thing to have because in, in larger applications, there are persons, more than, more than one person, in charge, of, in charge of safety on the premises. So it's good for them to have a notification regardless of the fire brigade. Uh, integration of fire detection and public, uh, not, no, sorry, and uh, voice evacuation systems. Inim has also recently produced this panel which integrates fire detection and voice evacuation. So in one panel, you have the functions of voice evacuation, fire detection, and of course, management of public address such as background music, uh, other uh, notifications and so forth. And finally, Internet of Things, we've all heard it, it's rising. In 2022, in 2022, it was worth some $80 billion in the whole world, and it's projected to quadruple to some $350 million billion, sorry, dollars by 2029. So uh, one, one uh, protocol that we've been looking, looking at as a company is LoRaWAN, meaning long range wide area network, which allows uh, wireless communication of various types of sensors over a very, very large distance. So up to more than 20 kilometers of open space or two to five kilometers within cities. And we had a pilot project in the city of Rijeka with some sensors inside the city. Uh, as I said, the worth of the smart, smart building and smart city uh, technologies in the world, and they can be used within a building to control, lit to control lighting, heating, and AC. They can be used to monitor air quality, for example, in classrooms. If you have your windows closed for too long, the children be will lose their concentration, they will become irritable, it will be hot, and so on. And these kinds of sensors can be connected with the ventilation system, or they can at least, in a basic version, give you an alarm that the air is, that there's too much CO2 in the air. Uh, during the pandemic, it was used, and it can still be used for indoor occupancy monitoring and integration with lightning or heating. So when an office building, let's say in the evening, when a floor is empty, the system can automatically turn off the lights, reduce temperature, and so on. And another thing is smart parking, so navigation of car users on every level towards available parking spots. And it can be used for outdoor asset tracking. So, for example, you can, uh, you can have a sensor on your truck, you can have a sensor on your forklift, which is connected via this very long range, and you can monitor its geolocation and see if it's moving when it shouldn't be moving, if someone stole it, or so on. And of course, you can also track your livestock. And finally, one nice quote, I don't know who said it, but the S in IoT stands for security, so there's no S in IoT. And uh, IoT basically can be used for, for some very secure purposes, but for these general applications, it's a very nice thing to have. And this is it for me. Thank you for listening.